Consider the following question. Here the relation is R A B C D E F G H I and J. These are the functional dependencies which are given. A B determines C. B D determines E F. A D determines G H. A determines I. And H determines J. Now the question is like this: What is the highest normal form the above relation is in? And is it in 2NF? If it is not in 2NF, then convert the relation to 2NF. Okay. So you can see every relational database is by default in 1NF. So we have to check whether the above relation is in 2NF or not. For that purposes, first of all, identify what are the candidate keys for this relation. So how do you do the candidate key? Go to the right hand side of each production and see what are the attributes which are not present. Like here, C is present, E is present, F is present, G is present, H is present, I is present, and J is present. There are three attributes which are not present. That is A, B, and D. So first of all, to find the candidate key, let us take A, B, D closure. Let us take A, B, D closure. If you take A, B, D closure, then A, B, D can identify itself. Now from the first production, A, B can determine C. Plus, uh, sorry, from the second production, B D can determine E F because B D we can determine E F, and because of A D, because of A D we can determine G H, because of A we can determine I, and because of H we can determine J. Therefore, you can say A B D can determine everything. Therefore, A B D is a candidate key. So there are no other candidate keys which are possible for this relation. Okay, now. To say that the relation is in 2NF, we have to check whether uh, it, uh, the, it is fully functionally dependent on the candidate key or not, right? So whether whether the relation is the relation is fully functionally dependent, fully functionally dependent on candidate key or not, on candidate key or not, okay? So, is it fully function dependent or not? For that purposes, let us see: is there any part of candidate key which is driving other attributes, right? So, you can see from the first production, A B is a part of candidate key which is driving the other attributes, as well as B D is a part of candidate key, right? So, you can see A B is a subset of A B D, and B D is a subset of A B D, right? Even A D is also a subset of A B D. A D is also a subset of A B D. Even Uh, this A is also a subset of A B D, right? Because all these are the subset of A B Ds. Hence, a part of candidate key can derive other attributes. Okay, so we have to break down this relation to make this relation come into two N F form. So, to for breaking down, we have to see what are the attributes which will be there and what will be the number of uh, relations in which we are going to break it down. Okay, so to see the number of relations, let us do one thing. So here they are saying that uh, A B Is a subset of A B D. So that means if I take A B closure, if I take A B closure, then what are the attributes which we can identify just with the help of A B? A B can determine A B from the first production. A B can determine C, and uh, with the help of A, we can determine I. With the help of A, we can determine I. Okay. Secondly, uh, if uh, we take next production is B D. So if we take B D closure. Then B D can determine B D itself. With the help of B D, I can determine E F. And uh, is there anything we can identify? No, we cannot determine anything else, right? And third production is A D. So if I take A D closure, A D closure, then with the help of A D, I can determine uh, A D and uh, G and H. And with the help of H, I can determine J. And uh, with the help of A, I can determine I. So these are the things we can determine from this. So I'm not taking this production right now because you can clearly see this A is a subset of this. So even if I'm going to, you know, I'll try to do it, then I will not be able to, you know, uh, do the solution properly. So I'm just going to solve A B B D uh, and A D. So just you'll just get to know why I'm not taking it. So you can see with the help of A B, I can determine A B C I. With the help of B D, I can determine B D E F. With the help of A D, I can determine A D G H I. Right? That means uh, 
uh, I can break this relation into this relation which is uh, the first relation will be R1 which will be having A, B, C, I second relation will be R2 which will be having attributes which are B, D, E, F third relation will be R3 which will be having the attributes G, A, D, G, H, I and J these are the attributes which we are going to have now further from this relation you have to see what are the functional dependencies which are well applicable on this so the only functional dependencies which are applicable on this they are a b determines c and a determines i they are application on applicable on this right so next what are the functional dependencies which are applicable on this uh, it is b d determines e f b d determines e f is there anything else no right is there what are the functional dependencies which are applicable on this they are a determines i h determines j right so there's something else uh, right and ad determines gh so these are the functional dependencies which are applicable on this relation now for the first relation where we have broken down the original relation uh, this is this relation 2nf or not is it in 2nf or not is it in 2nf or not is it in 2nf or not so we have to check that so the, for the first relation what are the candidate keys you can see uh, the c and i are in the right hand side so a and b are not included so if we take a b closure that means we are going to get a b c and i but a part of this a candidate key that is only a can determine i therefore there is a partial functional dependency which is occurring in this relation so if because of this partial functional dependency we have to break this relation so uh, we have to see uh, what are the things which will be broken so if i take a closure from here then it will be a i so we are going to break this relation to two further relations assuming those relations are r4 and r5 r4 will be containing a b c and r5 will be containing a i okay right so you can further identify what are the functional dependencies which are applicable on r4 so on r4 you can see uh, a b determines c is a functional dependency which is applicable or r5 you can see a determines i is a functional dependency which are applicable and nothing else is applicable okay so next is uh, see here there is no uh, partial function dependency here there is no partial function dependency next uh, in the relation r2 bd determines ef right there is only one function dependency which is applicable on this and you can clearly see there is no partial function dependency which is occurring okay now next is r3 so in case of r3 you can see we uh, broken down r3 into this relation for this relation first of all identify what are the uh, you know candidate keys which are possible for candidate key go to the right hand side and see what are the attributes which are not available uh, a and d are the attributes which are not available right so uh, everything else is available so if i take ad closure you can see i'm going to identify a d g h i and j and the part of this that is only a can identify i therefore uh, we have to break this relation so if i take uh, you know a closure then a closure is a and i a closure is a and i and uh, am i getting anything else no okay so that means i can break this relation into two relations that means the first relation will be containing r6 uh, which is a d g h and the second relation will be r7 which will be a uh, and i right so the, these are two relations these are the only two, two relations which are possible okay and uh, is there any other candidate key here no so even uh, you can clearly see in, in the candidate key we are not having h right so this is applicable this is uh, composed into two relation now further you can see what are the functional dependencies which are applicable on this you can see the functional dependencies which are applicable on this one is ad determines gh and h uh, determines j is not applicable h determines j is not applicable because okay j is also here now so h determines j is applicable further here uh, a determines i is applicable now is it in 2nf you can see this relation is in 2nf and this relation is also in 2nf now you have to tell which of is this complete because we are going to uh, no, uh, break this complete relation into the uh, this complete into the relation r4 which is containing a b c r5 which is containing ai we are going to break it into uh, r2 which is containing b d e and f uh, next is r6 which is a d 
G H and J and next is R7 which is containing A and I so these are the breakage of this particular relation now tell me whether this decomposition is lossless or not lossless or not yes these decompositions are lossless because we broken the relation on the basis of the can uh, on the basis of keys only uh, whether this this decom decomposition is um, functional dependency preserving or not you can clearly see we, we are only still playing with the original set of functional dependencies we are not added uh, we have not added any uh, functional dependency as well as, we, as well as we have not removed any functional dependency right so you can clearly see this is uh, this uh, decomposition is fd preserving right so in case of uh, 2nf we will always get the you know decomposition as fd preserving in all the cases okay so this is called as 2nf